What is up, YouTube? Welcome to the new episode of the Puns and Pints podcast, usually with Simon Stax and me, but tonight uh, we have a special guest. Simon could make it, so I invited the amazing Alex, also known as Positive Poker 72. Welcome, Alex. Thank you for joining. Thanks for having me, Paul. Appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really excited to have you as a guest because I not only respect you as a player, but also as a person, I think you have a really good vibe and it's the perfect matchup for this podcast. So uh, before I or you, you introduce yourself, uh, I think we're going to start with the tradition. Uh, this is called Punts and Pints. So we're going to start with the pints. We usually have a beer here during the podcast to loosen up the tongue a little bit and also uh, get the topics flowing. So for today's podcast, I brought a Swedish beer. Let me put Ooh. this in the camera. It's called Bron, but I think it's pronounced Brun. Uh, India Pale Ale, impeccable design. Uh, so, Brun, if you see this, feel free to sponsor the podcast. <laughs> I'm actually going to uh, drink it out the can. I hope it's not going to explode in my face here for a second. But yeah, the way we do this is usually I will take a sip, uh, tell you a little bit of something. Uh, feel free to open a beer yourself if you're listening or watching along. So I've been into India Pale Ales lately. I don't know, Alex, if you enjoy them from time to time. I've got no clue about beer, honestly. <laughs> You're the wrong guest, Ted. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> so India Pale Ales are usually super hoppy, uh, which I like. Okay. It's like a hipster beer. So mm. I kind of feel bad for liking them because I usually don't like hipsters, but <laughs> okay. we'll go with it. Um, so yeah, hoppy taste, uh, quite bitter. But uh, the thing we usually do is uh, compare the beer to a starting hand in poker. Mm -hmm. So this one is a pretty decent one. I think I would actually go as far as to give it uh, a top 10 hand, definitely. Maybe I'll go with... I think Black Queens, you know, for a good night oh. out, Black Queens. Yeah, that's not good. bad. I'll go with that. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, feel free um, to show us what you brought to the stream. <laughs> yeah, I've got a Paulano Weiss beer. I, I like Weiss beer more than the normal one, actually, but it's a alcohol free. So I don't know if that counts. <laughs> it does. We do not discriminate. We do not. It discriminate. does. All right. <laughs> I'll open it. No, I, I do enjoy the Hefe, it's called here, white beer. That one I enjoy a lot. Yeah. I think you 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 have to go to jail for drinking it out the bottle though, right? So like wh wheat beer is usually, you have to use a really? glass. <laughs> oh, that could be, yeah. I don't even have a glass, so <laughs> we'll take it. <laughs> um, but I like the idea of comparing it to a starting hand, man. I feel like it's an it's a healthy option. It's a good one. I'd say an ace ten suited, not the best, but not the decent decent hand. <laughs> you you yeah. can do some damage with the ace ten suited for sure. Mm -hmm. you know I have. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's a good All one. Right. So now that we got the beers out of the way, um, I think it's time. Like for the people that don't know you, I think you've been streaming for longer than me, to be honest. But uh, if people don't know you, maybe you can introduce yourself, tell a little, little bit about your background. Yeah, um, I might have been streaming longer, but you've worked so much the last years that you've outgrown me, I think, by far, at least on YouTube and everywhere else almost. I've been streaming on Twitch since late 2020, so almost four years. Mm -hmm. um, I've been... My name is Alex, by the way, Alexander. I'm from uh, South Tyrol, in the north of Italy. I've been playing poker for a long, long time now, over 10 years. And recently I kind of made the decision to quit, to quit also YouTube and all the content related to it. But I still enjoy playing and streaming from time to time. So yeah, 
it's still a fun game right we all love poker that's why we're here <laughs> yeah it's nice that you say like i quit youtube and the whole content game and now you're on the podcast <laughs> yeah yeah now, now i finally can make it into <laughs> yeah it's true <laughs> so uh, you said you were playing for more than 10 years did you yes. start out playing professionally from the beginning no not at all like I discovered the game maybe in 2010 or so. So a long time ago, back then it was kind of different. I'm not sure when did you start or when did you get in touch with the game? Well, even earlier, actually. Yeah. Oh, really? I, I was back Did in you? like back in high school. I think it was 2006. Wow. Uh, and then I played like I, ne I never did the content thing, right? I was still in high school doing mm -hmm. my Abitur. And uh, I watched the James Bond Casino Royale movie. And that's, oh. like, I think, the first time I actually saw poker and mm -hmm. really fell in love with the game, started playing sit and goes back. Like, it was the poker strategy days, you know? Uh, yes, I know. And yeah, and then switched over to cash games pretty quickly. And then in, like, between 18 and 20, played a lot, like a lot, a lot. Mm -hmm. and moved up to i think nl 100 back in the day but that was 24 tabling regular tables it was insane Big. yeah and then completely quit when i started university the university uh -huh. cashed out my entire bankroll i think it was like twenty thousand back then mm -hmm. and uh just restarted in 2022 actually <laughs> Big. i didn't know you had that background going there that's yeah. awesome yeah yeah for me, it was kind of similar because back then, you know, it was a different time. The poker boom everywhere mm. on TV, ads, whatever. And I discovered the game with a TV channel in Italy here, which was called Poker Italia 24. They showed poker all the time. <laughs> and me seeing their poker after dark million dollar cash game, that, that was the time when I got hooked immediately, mm -hmm. like with the game itself. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it was exactly, but it felt so crazy just playing a card game in TV and playing for, I don't know, millions or whatever. And back then I kind of thought, okay, these are kind of normal guys, I think, right? So why not give it a try or maybe study the game a bit? And I was really passionate. Yeah, I, I just thought about poker nonstop back then. So that's how I started. Yeah. So and you you started grinding from like the lowest stakes or did you just start at a higher limit? Funny thing, I started also back then with poker strategy because it was so huge. It yeah. was the biggest side and I was not even grinding. Like I was playing a little bit for play money, but I was just pinching uh, videos, strategy <laughs> videos all the time. Funny fact, for more than half a year, I just watched videos every day, every day, every day. I don't know, maybe I thought I need to prepare before I even start playing or I need to be really good, whatever. Um, and then I kind of tried, I played some sit and goes also, I played a little bit of cash game, um, but I kind of, it didn't take off, I don't know, I, I didn't have the patience in a sense. Mm -hmm. So I, I would deposit maybe 50 euros and grind a bit, but I, I was so impatient thinking I need to move up, whatever, I need to move on. What, it didn't work out really. <laughs> in the end, I maybe had back then two, 200 year in my account. I had a crazy session, hunting it almost all off on the 100 with 200 year in the account. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and then I said, no, now it's done. Now I quit poker forever. Now, now it's just what it is. So, so I thought, okay, now I'll go to university, do a normal job, whatever, have a career. And a few months later, let's say maybe half a year later, I knew I still had those 50 euros on my account, which were rotting there. And then in university, I had a lot of, lot of time on the side, right? So it's not like you always uh, study or do whatever. And then I slowly grinded a bit for fun. And then it finally took off. Like, I think I, I moved up from those 50 euro I turned them into 1K within two months or so. And then uh, yeah. a few months later, I was at NL100 
with 10k in the account yeah that was crazy all from cash games all from cash games just those 50 euro grinded it up from there yeah starting from ml5 then yeah it's not the best Sick. bankroll management but <laughs> yeah it yeah. worked out it worked out mm, yeah, you, yeah yeah you have i think like for people watching this today uh you also have to say like the games back then were so soft it's yeah like, online mm -hmm. was probably as soft as live games are now but mm -hmm. yeah it was ridiculous like if you knew how to three bet in position you were just crushing the entire pool yeah nobody knew anything basically yeah. even even the good players didn't even rex of nl50 didn't know they would need to defend their big blind everyone was folding 70 percent big blind against small blind you know yeah and, and when you had those reads, okay, I can steal white here. You would be printing, yeah. You would yeah, crush everyone. Yeah, yeah. So back then, what what was your way to study? You were just grinding, or were you actually like? I know I always tell people I used to be like poker strategy, of course, but then I also mm -hmm. was spend a lot of time at like the two plus two forums. That was like my thing. And of course, like reading all the books, right? Like Doyle Brunson and yes. Goldham and everything. I have some here in the background. <laughs> yeah, the Harrington, all of them. Oh, maybe we can see My... them. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I think they're just these. Yeah, all, all of these are just poker. Nice. Um, yeah. For me, it was always uh, videos, strategy videos, to be honest. I also started with the books. Mm -hmm. But back then there were a lot of sites, right? Deuces cracked, uh, card runners. It was card different runners, sites yeah. competing. Yeah. Then blue blue fire poker with Phil Galfond, mm -hmm. and he turned then he started then run it once. I think in 2013, mm -hmm. and then I was just run it once, watching almost every video there, which was uploaded. Yeah. Nice. Nice. So I, yeah, I was basically like exactly yeah. the time where I did not play at all. That was like my university <laughs> years. I did. I, I completely, I remember card runners, but I think when card runners started getting big, I actually quit. And then mm -hmm. uh, I completely missed this whole huge impact of these different poker schools that uh, came out. Mm -hmm. So when I restarted playing poker, like in 2022, I was so overwhelmed with all the stuff that is there. And now you have like solvers and everything. I basically had to relearn the entire game. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Definitely. Yeah. And I, I was never the guy coming up with own strategies. I, I was not enjoying making, okay, calculations and putting out Excel sheets and whatever. Mm -hmm. I just watched whatever videos I could find from different the guys, different really good players. And then I tried to take something from every style and so on. And at some point, yeah, it worked out. Mm -hmm. So who, who from back in the days, like who, who do you think was the best coach or player for you? Ooh, there was a lot of these guys. Um, I'd say Phil still, Phil Gelfond, mm -hmm. like him, him publishing videos, playing 501k back then in blue fire poker. That was just crazy. Mm -hmm. He would call. I do remember one video, he would call it the triple deke, which was kind of the move. And the move was, okay, bet small flop, bet small turn, and then blast river, because you keep his range right. And then on the river, you put all those hands into the mark, right? And <laughs> other, the, the stronger hands would raise before if you yeah. bet small. Yeah. Back then, it wasn't with the sizing small. Everyone would, would bet two thirds, maybe half. Yeah. And nothing else would exist. So yeah. 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 I still respect Phil Garfon too. Like I think if 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 I would have the chance to get anyone as like my poker coach, I think I would still choose Phil Galfond. I mm -hmm. think he has like such a great understanding of the game. And like compared to all the other guys from the past, I think he's the only one who has actually improved and is still like on top of his game. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and he has such a smooth voice too you know that's yeah. so nice to listen to it's so, to almost it's so sleep. Good looking you know <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah so yeah maybe yeah. maybe phil if you see this uh, reach out to us <laughs> we want to talk yes. we want to be friends <laughs> yeah actually that's why i reached out to them right um because i got an offer from a different side to get sponsored for um, to promote our coaching side mm -hmm. 
and and I always knew if I wanted to promote the site, it was run it once. And and yeah. then I reached out to them, and actually we could get it going. Sadly, I quit two months later, but <laughs> I didn't I didn't know before. So yeah. But ha have you spoken to Phil Galfon personally? Not personally, no. That would have been uh, fun. Yeah. I think they do a lot right now, right? They're they're improving the site, making some different yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it was kind of declining. Mm. Yeah, I think Phil, like he had his goal on more content production, more like outreach, audience building, etc. for this year. So yeah, mm -hmm. he has been, I don't know, like I, if you follow his newsletter, it's really good. I can definitely recommend mm. that. Um, well, not for you anymore. I think we can get into that now. Like, no. um, but before, um, what what do you think like, back in the day and nowadays maybe this has changed but what do you think separates like a good player a good winning player from a losing one apart from uh, your perfect bankroll management skills <laughs> uh, all right i think nowadays the game got so um so standardized in a way back then it was everyone was trying stuff and some coaches were saying this is good this is not so good but nobody knew exactly and nowadays it's more close. Okay, we have solvers. We know almost the perfect balances, the frequencies, whatever. The the kind of solution in a box. And back then it wasn't the case like that. Back then, uh, yeah, everyone was doing stuff, but nobody knew is this good or is it maybe not so good. So yeah. it was more creative, I think, back then almost. Mm -hmm. Even though you got the solver now telling you, okay, you can bet three times pot, you can over bet jam 10 times, whatever. But back then it felt more like an art almost. And now it's more structured, I'd say in a way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what do you think makes a good player now? Oh, Just I didn't even answer. Sorry. <laughs> I dodged, I dodged the question. I didn't even answer it. <laughs> Nowadays, I think you just gotta work. Um, you gotta you gotta really study those solutions. There's no way around it, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And back then, you could maybe come up with your own ideas, maybe be more, let's say, thinking ahead a bit. Back then, it was okay. This guy, it was more meta game in a sense. You thought, okay, he saw me bluffing, so I'm not gonna bluff this spot. I know he's a calling station. I'm not gonna bluff him. It was more kind of profiling players mm -hmm. and then reacting what, what we would call exploitive poker and now it's more yeah gto just have a certain strategy stick to that and try the best you can how to apply it let's say yeah do you think that's also like true for live games because i would probably agree with you when it comes to online because everyone is like playing similar or at least using gto as the foundation of their strategy so uh, you have to know the like gto lines uh but mm -hmm. in life games i feel like it's still this profiling life games are wild yeah they are still the same i think as say 10 years ago yeah definitely yeah. life games are crazy yeah so so what what, what would you recommend like to someone who's always been playing online and now goes to play live what what should they change live games they should just try to pick up whatever read they can like it's still good to have a base strategy and be on a good mathematical approach but in live games if you see someone calling down with whatever hand he should never call down with never bluff this guy like stop bluffing all hands even though you think in theory i should bluff this hand it's a good bluffing candidate no, just value bet whatever you can and never bluff a hand. Because also in live games, nobody likes to lose, right? And you have to wait so long to get a hand. And then you even should fold it on the river. How could you, right? <laughs> it, it's just not going to happen most of the time. Yeah. So you got to be really patient and pick your spots well, I'd say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I would probably agree. Yeah. Don't, don't bluff the older gentleman. <laughs> no, I mean, I'd say if you can get a good read, there's people who will fold because they're just scared, but there's people who will be never folding. You just got to have a good idea to profile the people in the right way. Yeah. Yeah. 
So and that way, yeah, you you can gain a huge edge in my opinion that way. Also, people sometimes we play with friends. Sometimes we travel to live stops and so on. And sometimes we talk about hands, and friends tell me hands. Okay, he folds a certain hand in a spot which should never be a fold in theory. And I just think in my head, sometimes I'm not as creative. Like you just can think outside of the box. Mm -hmm. I think, no, you, you got to get this in. It's such a strong hand. But he's just explaining, no, this guy's never bluffing this line with this size. So I just fold everything. Mm -hmm. And then he shows you bottom set and you made a good fold with your face as well. Mm -hmm. it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's that way, yeah. That's super interesting. Yeah. Do do you have like uh, I I have not played that much life. I sometimes uh, play cash games here, life in Hamburg, in the mm -hmm. casino. But it's only like NL two hundred, so I don't think like the highest I've played is NL three hundred. I think life. But uh, do you have like a favorite life tell you're looking for? That's a good question. I, I was trying to get into these before, uh, let's say maybe a year ago. I think there's also some online content on, on what you what you can exploit there. That's a huge edge if you know how to use those well. Mm -hmm. I was thinking preflop timing, in my opinion, really can show something in a sense that someone looking at their hand really fast and then putting it down again, it's either a really, really strong hand because they get scared, they're kind of surprised, you know, seeing a strong hand. Mm -hmm. If they're having an in-between hand, usually, okay, they look a bit, they think about, should I play this, should I not play it, right? And mm -hmm. if it's a really weak hand, they also know, okay, I just fold right away. So timing, in my opinion, can be really strong in life games. Um, but it's also, you got to be really pay a lot of attention, right? Seeing everyone's, how he's looking, how long he's looking, what he's yeah, doing. Yeah. I feel like, like the life tell I picked up on and it's so true for, I would say like 80% of players. And I think it's a really good one is that people usually never double check their hands. So if you're sitting mm -hmm. at the table, they never double check their hands if they have a made hand. So mm -hmm. they will double check if it's like a weakish or a draw hand, but if that it's makes made, sense. Yeah. they never double check it. Yeah. So that that's usually like, if you take some time between bedding and people are not checking their cards, like every five minutes or something, I don't know how long a hand can be like yeah. but, uh, that. That has been like a really good tell for when I know they are on a draw and I have to charge the maximum because people, of course, in life games hate folding their draws. So yes. I, like that, what I would always exploit that when I see someone, okay, you, you checked your hand like four times and we're only at the turn. So I'm pretty sure your hand is not good right now. That's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. I've, I've got two more, but these are not mine. These I saw in videos, one from Fader which I think is a really good one when you're in a huge spot, let's say on the river and the guy bets all in or whatever. Usually people, when, they, when they're bluffing, they're always nervous, right? Mm -hmm. So if you tank a lot and you kind of get the feeling, okay, this guy gets now a bit more relaxed, maybe after a minute or, minute or so, mm -hmm. then it's quite likely he's, if he's bluffing, he's always going to be nervous, no matter what, because he doesn't want yeah. to be caught. Yeah. If he knows he's won anyways, at some point, then the, maybe he's not as tense anymore and so on. Yeah. And then you, you could think maybe he has a good hand here. An another one is from Negriano, who was, I think it was a TV show where, where he, he asked Lex, actually. I think there's a lot of videos on this one. They were also in the big space but where Lex bluffed the river all in for 60k or whatever. And he tanked a bit, looked at him and asked him a question, a funny question. And Lex smiled, but in a weird way. So you would see he was tense. This was not a genuine smile. Yeah. And that way he told later he found out he was bluffing just because the smile was so strange. He <laughs> knew that he, he was here trying to hide something. That's pretty sweet. That's a yeah. good tell. Yeah. Like, asking people stuff that can give you some yeah. like if they're not tense or tense that can help a lot yeah. but usually i'm too shy in a way to always ask and so on it's not mm -hmm, maybe mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah mm -hmm. i know it for myself like the funny thing is it's 
with me, it's the other way around. So I'm super calm when I'm bluffing, mm -hmm. but I'm extremely nervous when I have like the nuts. <laughs> really? Yeah. Wow. So I'm I'm completely cool when I'm bluffing, but if I have a really strong hand, I, I notice myself like my, my blood pressure is going up and I'm super excited. So for a long time too, like two, three minutes if yeah, you or it doesn't it doesn't wow. like it doesn't go away. I think like my my uh blood pressure goes up to 180 or something if I yeah. have like a really strong head. But, yeah. but you don't try, it's just natural how it is. It's just or... natural. Like I and there's nothing I can do about it too. So uh, I've, tr wow. I've really tried like a, a, nowadays I have like my, my, my legs are under control. My hands are under control, so I'm not shaking as much, but, uh, I used to shake like extremely hard. Okay. Then, then all the reads before have no meaning because they all yeah, build up then, on that fact, yeah, but, right? But if you like, if you know that about me. Yeah. Then, but how uh, could you know? Yeah. <laughs> See? I just gave it away. I just gave it okay. away. Okay. <laughs> now, guys, you know what to do if you play against Paul. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Big. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. So, after playing for like 10 years, what would you say is like your favorite or your least favorite thing about the game? The favorite is the freedom, playing full time, being your own boss, like, and doing something you enjoy. Definitely at the beginning, it was for me just amazing. Mm -hmm. Playing almost a video game and getting money for it. That's what more can you have? Um, the least favorite, um, definitely the, the swings kind of, because you never know, okay, it's just now downswing. Maybe I should adjust my strategy. You're always in that frame of uncertainty, right? You never really know. Yeah, maybe I'm doing something wrong, but maybe it's off. Um, that can be tricky long time, I'd say. Yeah. Can Can you remember like your biggest swing you ever had? I think I was quite fortunate to not have any huge one. My biggest one was maybe 40, 50 stacks at then 100, 200. So maybe five, six K or so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I've seen, I've seen really good players run, I don't know, 100 binds under EV and stuff. So. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. crazy, yeah. Whatever yeah, I, can happen. I, do, I don't know if you know him, but there's uh he's from England, I think. Uh Ben Abed Beat. He I think he just started YouTube uh to show because he he was I think like 100 k below EV or something. And really? uh it's insane. And he's like, I think he's a really, really good player. So the stuff I have seen from him, I really think like he knows what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. So to see him lose like a hundred K is like insane. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Of course he's like, he's playing higher stakes, right? He's playing 2K and 5K occasionally too. So yeah, that's, that's uh, pretty sick. So yeah, maybe um, coming from the swings. Uh, so you mentioned it earlier, you actually quit playing professionally a couple of months ago. Uh, do yeah. you want to guide us through that decision? I, I think already a year ago or more, I quit in theory, I just announced it now. The last two years I did more video content and so on. I wasn't playing as much poker anymore. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I realized, let's say, so I started playing professionally in 2012, maybe. And after a few years, I realized, okay, the passion is going a bit down now. I'm not in... I'm not enjoying the game as much anymore as I used to, used to but I still play because I make a living out of it, right? And and I need to make money somehow. So I had a few times where I thought, okay, maybe I should try something else now, go in a different direction. And if it wasn't for streaming, I already would have quit, I think, 2019 or so. I had a big decision there already. Started working in some normal jobs, trying out stuff. But then I thought, no, I always watch Twitch and YouTube and so on. Why I could give it a shot, just try to make yeah. some videos myself to stream a bit. It might be fun. Yeah. And it was a lot of fun. So I enjoyed it a lot until now last year. Yeah. Um, but the main decision for me was just not that excitement was just gone at some point. 
funny thing since now I've quit it. It's actually coming back a bit because it feels it feels relaxing again. It's the game feels fun, right? There's no pressure to to perform whatever. Um, it's it's actually fun again. Uh, that yeah. surprised me in a way. Yeah. I think you mentioned it. Like I was at your, one of your streams a couple of weeks ago, I think, mm -hmm. and you just made the switch from playing full time to just playing for fun and streaming for fun as well. And mm -hmm. you were like, this is way better because I'm so relaxed and I can just like yeah. hang out with the people in the chat. And you, I think like, I don't know if you actually play better because you don't have the pressure to make money consistently uh, with <laughs> poker, but uh, yeah, you, you were like, this is way better than before. <laughs> yeah. That's another funny thing. I think I play better also because I only play in a good mood, right? If I'm not in a mood to play, I don't play. So. I'm almost always playing a game. That's a great advantage in a sense. Yeah. If people don't know it. Alex has started like a new YouTube channel, which I think is super interesting. And I know you put in a lot of work in it. And I think it's somewhat like a mix between philosophy and psychology. But yeah. I think it's also like I've watched, <laughs> I think I've watched all of the videos by now, actually. Okay. Um, Appreciate it. And I, I think it's like a super cool thing because you you can feel that you're like a poker player at heart still because it's a lot about like critical thinking, problem solution. Uh -huh. So everything translates well into this new topic. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about the new project. Yeah. Um, as I said, in 2016, 17, I was um, trying out some new stuff and I really found, okay, I enjoy all those let's say, uh, self-development, uh, personal growth stuff, channels, whatever. I've read a lot of books about it. I did a lot of workshops, formations. And that might be an area where I'm heading into next, let's say more into mental coaching and so on. And just, I enjoy all the topics about it. So <clears throat> when, when I made the decision, I actually, funny thing, <clears throat> in uh, late December, I thought about new formats for the poker um, channel because I, I watched, I think he's called Duck Duck, Duck Duck, a creator who's got a million views on every YouTube video. Mm -hmm. And he came up with an idea. You got to make innovative content to create almost your own niche, right? If you have new ideas, which nobody else has, a lot of people are going to like it, hate it. But some people are going to like it and they're going to stick to it because they can't find it anywhere else, right? Mm -hmm. And so I thought about some creative content ideas, maybe doing some different formats. Also, actually, I thought about doing one with you in a sense that <laughs> as a guest to invite you, it's sad that it didn't happen anymore now. Um, which, what was the two cards for ice or so where you would guess uh the the whole cards in a sense it was kind of a funny thing maybe you can pick up on it or yeah, at I, some I'm point i'm gonna steal that <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll send you all all the things i think i have my my thinking still and then i i kind of in my head i i realized okay if i still make content a lot at some point i might get sponsored or do some deals but I'm still going to have to play a lot of poker or even more poker. But I already knew I don't enjoy it as much anymore. So I, so more than, than the content, I liked the context around it. I liked making videos. I liked building community streaming. And then I thought, okay, maybe I could still do this with the videos, but it, with a content that I really am passionate about right now, which I enjoy. And that is all the wisdom stuff, all that mindset stuff which my goal is to 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 kind of i'm still learning so it's it's an experiment for now but the goal is to to make it in an entertaining way that as many people can benefit from it as possible yeah. so just almost like an entertaining video but you get something out of it that's my goal in the end and yeah let's see where it goes for now it's a lot of fun and i don't know where where it's heading to yeah yeah, I really enjoyed. I think like actually because your videos offer so many different thoughts and so mm -hmm. much input, I think like just I don't know if you are thinking about doing it, but I think it's actually smart to cut them up into mm -hmm. like a single thought 
and then post that stuff not on YouTube because YouTube is like a long form platform. Just post that on like TikTok. I'm I'm pretty sure like I I actually follow a lot of guys who are doing like a bit of a philosophy psychology type of stuff, and they usually cut it down to like thirty second mm -hmm. videos, and those perform really great. And I think like you you have the soothing voice and like I I think everything is there and like your your thinking is really straightforward and clear which is great. So I think you can do really well on the short form still. That's a great idea. Yeah, I thought about that. For now, I just wanted to go full focus on YouTube. So create long form to to learn it and to get better at that. But at some point, I think it's a great idea. Yeah, I might have to look into that. Definitely. So what's 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 the plan for the future now for you that you stop playing poker professionally do you have like a regular nine to five job now yes i actually do only part-time for now i'm working at school as an assistant teacher in a way i already did that three four years ago sometime also part-time when i was still playing a lot mm -hmm. and that's actually a kind of a nice balance with just sitting the whole day in front of the pc so you get out there, you you meet with the kids, with the colleagues. That's that's I enjoy that a lot. Like Is that is that what you studied in university? No, in university I did economics, but just because I didn't know what to study after high school, that's why. <laughs> you know, everyone who doesn't know just goes economics. That's it. Yeah. Interesting. Um yeah. It's funny, I, like I actually have a degree in teaching, so I, I oh. do have the in Germany, it's called like the Staatsexamen, right? Mm -hmm. So I do have that, like I could uh, go into the gymnasium any day and like teach kids. I think that's why I also like this so much, mm -hmm. because I'm still like, um, I think I'm pretty good at explaining things and I like mm -hmm. educating people on different topics. But now, like, it has become more poker related and not like yeah. school related. But yeah. I still feel like I feel comfortable teaching and I feel comfortable standing and uh, like in front of people and talking to them. That's never been an issue of mine. So I still think like I would be a good teacher, but, uh, you know, life and then like yeah. things, things, things just turn out differently. And I was like, I think I was like you, I was watching like the Twitch poker guys anyways, and the YouTube guys. Mm -hmm. And I was like, maybe I can do that too, because I always enjoyed, like, I, I do have like a background in marketing as well. So, um, I was like, I can do the content side of things and I'm pretty sure I can relearn the poker side of things. So mm -hmm. I just gave it a shot and, um, now, like, I think 2024 is going to be like the first year where I really do a hundred percent of just this. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. It feels like you followed what, what you, yeah, yeah. what, uh, what you enjoyed the most. And I yeah. think that's the best you can do in every yeah, situation. And, yeah. I completely agree with you. Like the moment you, you don't feel passionate about the thing yeah. you do, you're, you're not going to be like any good in it. Because mm -hmm. the people who are really successful in things are the ones who love it. Yes. Yeah. I've, I've got friends on the road. Okay. They saw I would make money with poker, right? And they tried, but nobody made it. They just saw it as a thing to make some money and they didn't realize it was all about the passion and you had to put in so much work and effort. Yeah. 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 Great. So, mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm super excited what like your next chapter, especially with, uh, your self-development YouTube career will bring. Yeah. So, let's see. Uh, thank you so much for talking to me. I think it's been a blast here having you. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, I really enjoyed it too. And to all the viewers, thanks for listening and do whatever you enjoy the most. Now, now I have to say uh, one more thing because I forgot to mention follow Alex. Uh, That's no problem. You, you have good. the channels uh, link below. Uh, follow the podcast, obviously. And yeah, goodbye. Thanks for joining us. Goodbye. Thanks. Thanks.